clearly within the um, uh, NRC's regulatory uh, structure, the two regions look to me like they have a double standard. You know, in the last podcast, we talked about um, Sandy and the fact that the uh, fuel pool cooling system had, had shut down, and they had essentially a fresh nuclear core sitting in the fuel pool. Um, the NRC has announced that the pool would have boiled in less than a day. Um, but it's interesting. One of the things we're, we are not finding out is how long the fuel pool was not cooled and how hot the fuel pool got when it wasn't cooled. Um, you know, the, the, the NRC um, uh, doesn't feel obligated to tell the public uh, if they were at risk, and certainly the people that run Oyster Creek are not going to either. I would think that that would be information that should be shared with the public. You know, the pool didn't run for so many hours and the temperature rose by, by so much. But um, the NRC is playing uh, keep away with, um, with that data. The, the Oyster Creek refueling outage, before they knew Sandy was coming, was supposed to last for 21 days. Um, we know that because um, a, a, a company that provides contract employees for outage work named Bartlett uh, announced it on the, on the web. It says uh, um, the first day of the outage is um, October 22nd and that the outage is supposed to last 21 days. Um, then, you know, please be there on time, et cetera. Let's so this was a note going out to employees that would be helping manage the outage? Yes. I, yes. I understand. Right. Um, what I think, though, is the, the interesting end of the, um, uh, of the Bartlett uh, announcement. And they said, uh, um, yeah, come join Bartlett and the team at Oyster Creek for their 23rd refueling outage and help make it one of the best outages of the season. <laughs> Well, I think uh, this is not exactly the best outage of the season, and it's likely the worst outage of the season with, um, with the problems that Sandy uh, provoked, and now they've got cracks in their reactor. Do you get their Christmas cards, too? Or? No, <laughs> I'm not on their Christmas card list. I would like to talk about uh, NRC, and um, I understand that NRC is backing a new study to evaluate earthquake probability, basically to re-examine the risk. And this is being brought up. This is an initiative, as I understand it, of the new NRC chairperson who is a geologist. Yeah, the, the Chairman Yasko was run out of office by, the, uh, by Congress. Essentially, Congress is pro-nuclear, whether you're Republican or Democrat. Um, and in his place, um, the, the Obama administration appointed um, um, a, a, a woman named Allison McFarland, and uh, she's got a doctorate in uh, in geology. Um, she's against Yucca Mountain for geological reasons and has been. But in addition, you know, she obviously knows her stuff as somebody who you know, had her entire academic career in in geology, and uh, she is. Um, uh, pushing the NRC to reevaluate seismic risks around the country. You know what? We built these plants 50 years ago as a nation. We we did the the site studies that chose these plants in the 60s, and um, uh, seismic risk and seismic analysis has grown dramatically since then. Um, and one of the things we've discovered is that we don't know much about East Coast earthquakes. Um, the, Certainly, we don't know about West Coast earthquakes, and there's a lot that we found. But, you know, if you ask an average American, they say um, the earthquakes occur in California, and that's about it. But the, um, the East Coast earthquakes are, um, uh, are an area that really needs further analysis. You know, we talked about the, the um, North Anna earthquake in the last audio, and we really don't need to talk about it again. But this entire issue of... Um, the, the NRC being forced to go back and look at uh, whether or not we really need to redesign these or these plants to meet not the earthquake we thought would happen in 1960, but the earthquake we understand will happen now, uh, you know, 50 years later with, with better computers and better, better analysis. I don't expect any, any seismic shift in these seismic calculations, not because the academics don't understand more, but because the industry can't afford to make any major changes. And so, still make money. And still make money, mm -hmm. right. These plants will shut down before they're modified extensively to meet these kinds of seismic risk. 
Well, finally, I just want to, before we leave, talk about a speak you're giving in New England coming up on Tuesday. Uh, yeah, I've been asked to, um, to speak in um, Western Massachusetts. So if anyone in Western Massachusetts is, uh, is interested, on, uh, on November 13th, from uh, 7 o'clock till 9 o'clock in, uh, in the evening in Greenfield, Massachusetts. That's in the, north, um, the, the northwest corner of uh, Massachusetts. I'm going to be speaking at, um, uh, at the uh, Unitarian Universalist Church there, and it's on Main Street in, uh, in Greenfield. And the topic is um, uh, you know, more lessons from Fukushima, and uh, it's very near to the Vermont Yankee unit, uh, so there's some interest in you know the, these units that are very similar to um, the Fukushima units, like Pilgrim in Massachusetts and like Vermont Yankee, which is about 20 miles away. So we'll be talking about the Mark I reactor design and um, um, uh, for about two hours, so I'm looking forward to it. All right, more lessons from Fukushima, Tuesday 13th, the 13th in Greenfield, Massachusetts. Arnie, thanks so much for coming on again.